showing Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in a dead heat in the three most crucial swing states for the general election. We're going to show you those numbers. Former Texas Governor Rick Perry will join us next with his take on... So these brand new polls came out this morning and they show Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton in a dead heat in three pretty important places for the general election. The front runners are neck and neck in Florida, in Ohio, and in Pennsylvania, according to these brand new Quinnipiac polls. Clinton leading by a single percentage point in Florida and Pennsylvania. That's within the margin of error. Trump is also uh, within the margin of error in both of those states, and he has the upper hand in Ohio, where he leads Hillary Clinton by four points. Former Texas Governor Rick Perry will join us in just a moment, but first let's go over to Bill at the touch screen, uh, who has a look at why these three states are historically so crucial between Trump and Clinton, Bill. Electoral college, that's what it's all going to be about come November, and you're going to hear a lot about this, too. We put a bit of a baseline in here. This is the 2012 result. Uh, from Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. So Obama 332, uh, Romney 206. If Trump is to win the White House, where would he turn states from blue to red? Well, you just talked about Ohio, right? There's that poll in Ohio. Uh, if, if that were to be the case come November, watch how the Republican number changes. You give him 18 electoral votes. What about Florida? I mean, big. These are critical swing states that we've been debating for almost 20 years right now. Uh, in Florida right now, it's neck and neck. What if Trump could flip that and take the state of Florida away from uh, from the Democrats. You give them 29 electoral votes, and now you're 253. What about Pennsylvania? This is going to be debated for a long time, almost every day. Well, if this if this poll is right, if it's within the margin of error, if Donald Trump is able to steal Pennsylvania away from Democrats, which hasn't been done in some time, there you are, 273. So you're just above the electoral vote. Uh, that is necessary of 270, and that's why these three states are so critical. Six months out, Martha. Wow. Uh, 273 is a pretty slim margin. So as promised, joining us now, former presidential candidate and former Texas Governor Rick Perry. Governor, welcome. Great to have you with us this morning. Thank you, Martha. You have looked at plenty of polls over the course of your career. Uh, what do you make of these new Quinnipiac numbers and what Bill just laid out? Well, I think it's an indicator that there's going to be a close race. You know, one of the fascinating things, Martha, that I don't know whether anyone's talked about yet or not, is how important the military vote is going to be. And you think about Florida, you think about Ohio, and you think about Pennsylvania. Uh, those states have some substantial military, both active duty and veterans. And Donald Trump is way, way ahead with the military uh, oriented voter uh, and I think that that's something that uh, is going to have a powerful impact on this election. Uh, Secretary yeah. of State Clinton has some real issues uh, that are going to have to be addressed by her and the Democrats dealing with the issues of Benghazi, uh, dealing with the lack of support that is perceived and I will suggest to you is real uh, with the uh, men and women in the United States military and the veterans. So we see strength, perhaps, with military voters for Donald Trump, definitely with men. He does very well with men. We know that he has problems with women, with the Hispanic vote. But let's talk about your party for a moment, because that's where the focus is this week as he heads to Washington on Thursday to talk to Paul Ryan. Let's play this soundbite from Paul Ryan. I want to get your thoughts on this, Governor. He's the nominee. I'll do whatever he wants with respect to the convention. And the point I would make is, I just think it's important that all wings of the party come together to get ourselves at full strength. And we shouldn't pretend, uh, you've written about this, we shouldn't pretend that, that we're there, we're not. It's been a while since we spoke, and the point is, uh, we just need to get to know each other. And my goal is to help put together a unified party that sticks to our principles. He says we shouldn't pretend that we're there. Uh, I mean, you look at what Donald Trump has said the past week about taxes, increasing taxes. Uh, he doesn't talk about cutting spending. He's talking about raising spending for the military, raising spending for the VA, which a lot of people are, are of course, in favor of. Um, but none of these, you know, go along with real sort of conservative orthodoxy. And he said himself, it's not called the conservative party. It's called the Republican Party. So what party is this now to you, Governor? Well, it's the party that it's always been. We've had uh, disparate views. Uh, you think back to uh, 08 and to 12, there were individuals who didn't agree completely with our nominees at that particular point in time, but we all settled in and, and, and supported them. Um, I think you will see a 
very strong coalition and coalescing behind Donald Trump as we go along. Everybody needs their time to uh, have the conversations. And, you know, I admire uh, Speaker Ryan for uh, reaching out and saying, hey, we need to talk to each other. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, he, he, you never heard him say never Trump. Uh, and, and so we're going through a process, and the process works. And I think that was my point that I've made over the course of the last few days. Uh, listen, Donald Trump wasn't my first choice. Uh, I was my first choice. <laughs> and uh, Donald Trump wasn't my second choice. But he was the choice of the vast majority uh, of the uh, Republican primary voters that are going to go into this process and do that, from my perspective. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll settle in. It's this simple from my perspective, Martha. Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, Supreme Court justice appointments. That is going to have 40 years worth of impact on our country, not four or eight years as this election will. It's interesting because so Democrats make the same right. argument, you know, when they look at that picture. And that's the, way, that's the conversation that they want to have here as well. I found it interesting yesterday that, that Senator Marco Rubio came out and said, take my name off the list. Um, if it's on the list, I'm not interested. I do not want to be the vice president. You see people in your party who are clearly placing their bet that this is not going to go the GOP's way, and they don't want to have any of their fingerprints on any part of this race. What do you think about that? I don't want to have my fingerprints on empowering and enabling Hillary Clinton. That's what this is about for me. When you look at that Supreme Court appointment that's going to be made to fill uh, Justice Scalia's spot, when you think about that there may be two more in the next four years, then I, I'm, I am, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that there is an individual that is listening to people, strict constitutionalists like Rudy Giuliani, individuals uh, like myself who have a rather unquestionable conservative record for 30 years. Those are the kind of individuals that I want to have impact on Donald Trump as he's making these decisions. And you can't do it if you're outside the tent. What about his comments about women? Because we're going to show an ad in a little while where he really he goes right after Hillary Clinton, uh, talking about the way that she ate cake at his wedding. There's going to be no holding back from the Clinton campaign or the PACs that are supporting Hillary Clinton, which is where this one came from, I should point out, um, in going after the, the comments that he has made. And they will put him in a situation where he's going to have to be defending those remarks all the time. You are, as you pointed out, um, a person who has a very conservative record and a very, you know, spiritual background as well. What, are you okay with the things that he says? If people are going to focus on how somebody eats, uh, whether it's uh, Donald Trump talking about John Kasich or about Hillary Clinton, they're missing the whole point here. Uh, there are going to be a lot of ways to distract away from the issues that are really important. How do you get this economy back on track? I do believe Donald Trump uh, does have uh, ideas and concepts that can get this country back on track. Bringing those trillion and a half dollars back offshore into this country to develop this economy. One of the things as a governor that is music to my ears coming out of Donald Trump is when he talks about the devolving of power out of Washington, D.C., for education purposes, for example, not leaving those, uh, you know, common core in place and those uh, no child left behind, all of those Washington-centric programs, bring them back to the states where they belong. All, all of right. those things are real conservative issues. And, you know, again, how somebody eats, that, that's Irrelevant, a distraction. I got it.